Hey everyone, it's B, and today I am out in the woods, and we are going to do a tattoo tour. Um, I've done a tattoo tour once before on my channel. You will not find the video because I only had one tattoo, and it was uh, ages and ages ago. It was about 2017, 2018 when I did that tattoo tour, so today we're going to do a brand new one, as promised, um, and of course, happy vlog -a -ween. In my personal opinion, I've got a lot of experience with tattoos. I've had tattoos in all kinds of different locations on my body. My first tattoo was on my foot, and it tickled. Um, and so yeah, um, aside from my foot tattoo, which I will show you an image of and discuss inside of my house because I'm outside and I'm wearing these boots that I don't really feel like trying to take off. Um, aside from that tattoo, I'm going to go ahead and show you all of them right here, right now. So my first tattoo was on my foot, and here's an image of the tattoo. I got it as a matching tattoo with my brother in 2017, right prior to him being deployed. Um, it's a design that I came up with, actually we both came up with uh, when we were children, from a book, a Pirates of the Caribbean book, that showed different symbols and different meanings on pirate flags. The compass was a, a true north sort of a situation, and the sparrow was a freedom situation, although it's actually a swallow, not a sparrow. Um, so yeah, that was my first tattoo. I got it as a matching tattoo with my brother. Um, my second tattoo, I got actually with a friend in Las Vegas. You know, I didn't think about how I need to like hang up my cloak somewhere. I guess I'll just lay it on the ground and hope no spiders get in it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. My next tattoo uh, was this beeline tattoo right here. So it is a bumblebee and it has a line. It is a pun. Um, it was the second tattoo I ever got. I didn't have really any thought or planning in it. I just really wanted to get a tattoo. Um, so my friend actually had me design theirs and I'll show you the image here. So this is the tattoo that they got and this is the tattoo that I got at the same time. It was my first bonding tattoo experience and I love the idea of tattoos as a social experience, as a, as a a bonding moment for two people, so I actually really enjoy doing coordinated and matching tattoos. Um, my next tattoo that I got was, it's actually covered up now, but I was in a triad and um, it was three dots and I'll actually show you an image of all three of our hands together here with all of our tattoos. But it was three dots across the ring finger. We were dating uh, for six months and decided that that was it was the pandemic, it was 2020, like apparently that's just when you get tattoos with people who you're no longer with anymore and then have to get a cover up. It's literally the only tattoo that I regret. Um, my next tattoo was that same year, uh, a month or two after the matching tattoo with the triad situation. Um, and it is this one right here. And I'll also be sharing an image because this is a bit of a difficult one to show. But it has uh, a lion here and it says there are better things ahead than than those we leave behind and um i got this as a matching tattoo with the same friend that i got the beeline tattoo with his is on his chest and i'll show you an image of that right here um and it's just uh, meant to be like a new beginnings moving on moving forward sort of a thing um 2020 was the year that i first went no contact with my family and um, we're since back in touch, but it definitely hallmarks like an important moment in my life where I decided to um, really prioritize my own mental well-being and um, pursue a future that I wanted to see without caring too much about what my family thinks. Um, so my next tattoo that I got was a raven tattoo. It's this one here. And uh, this has, uh, this was another sort of like a coordinated tattoo situation with the same person who I got the beeline tattoo with. Um, so I'll show you his art here, which I designed myself. Um, his is about Hawaii, which is where he is from. And he asked me to design something that he could have to sort of like pay homage to his personal history. Um, and I got this raven here flying with me. I like the idea that I can put my arm out and it looks like the raven is flying in the direction that I am like pointing, gesturing, whatever, headed. And this one's a little bit more personal. I'm not gonna explain too much in depth, but has a lot to do with um, destiny being on my side, effectively. 
My next tattoo was this one here. It's much larger than I initially wanted. It crowds this beeline tattoo up here. So I'm a little bit bothered with the placement. I plan to actually turn this into a full, ha like a whole half sleeve situation with like a wizard. And I got a bunch of different ideas, but that's going to be expensive and take a lot of time. So I'm kind of like on hold with that. But uh, yeah, so this one here is um, based off of a Phoebe Bridgers song and the uh, line from the song is I buried a hatchet and it's coming up lavender. I designed this tattoo after a particularly big heartbreaking moment for me in 2022 and um, a moment uh, where I realized that uh, I was able to like let go and move on from things uh, both with my mom with uh, a very important person in my life who's no longer in my life um, and the concept is that like um, I've buried the hatchet I'm ready to have peace um, and it's coming up lavender meaning like um, it's not all coming up roses which is what I expected but it's coming up lavender which is still beautiful and fragrant and um, beneficial of its own uh, and yeah, so as you can see, it's not actually a hatchet. It is a battle axe. Um, and the flower here is lavender. And then it's got a crystal behind it and a sun behind the crystal shining through and causing all the different colors. So yeah, uh, this one was probably one of the most symbolic that I made. Uh, one of the most symbolic tattoos that I designed for myself. Yeah, uh, so all of those tattoos were done in Las Vegas, and most of them were done by the same artist. The only one that wasn't done by the same artist was the one on my foot. The other tattoos uh, that were done by the same artist, um, I got them at discount or for free because uh, he was older and retiring and he just liked my stories. So I would reach out and be like, hey, I'm interested in a new tattoo. I've got a cool idea, cool design. He'd be like, show it to me, tell me about it, you know, and... Um, and then I would show up at his place and he would do my art and I would regale him for however long it took uh, to do my work. So that was a really awesome setup that we had. He's currently retired and I don't think he's doing tattoos anymore, but it was definitely nice to have that experience with an artist. Uh, and I was nervous about going to a new artist. New Mexico I actually did get two tattoos. The first one was the cover-up here of the <laughs> the triad ring tattoo. The second one was here on my thigh, and you'll see an image pop up here, um, and it says trans joy. When I was living in Vegas, uh, the last couple of months there were actually pretty scary uh, for me as a trans person, and um, I also have friends who are trans and who experience some pretty terrifying harassment and attempted assault. It made me very scared to be out as a trans person and to be visibly queer. It made it really hard to leave the house and there were a few other like unre like a few other incidents that weren't related to me being trans that occurred while I was there that just made it so that I was effectively a shut-in for a while. And when we moved to New Mexico, I was just so pleasantly surprised by how kind people were about the concept of being around a trans person and it was just so welcoming and affirming that I I had time to sort of hit a nervous system reset and I was able to think objectively and logically about going out in public, about being visibly queer. And I just, I was reminded of why it's important to be visibly queer, which is because there are people out there who don't have the vocabulary, don't have the uh, interactions or the experience to know that they are normal for being queer and that uh, queerness is a beautiful thing. It's not something that should be hidden. It's not something that should elicit violence. And if it does elicit violence, that's the other person's fault. Like that's their problem, not yours. It's not your fault for being queer. Um, so I intentionally got this tattoo here on my thigh because I thought we would be in New Mexico a lot longer. <laughs> um, up until we moved to the north part of the United States, I really wasn't encountering much cold weather, which meant that I was in shorts all the time. And it's really hard to hide uh, this tattoo while in shorts. And I wanted to just put it in a place where, like, I am, I am visibly queer, period, regardless of what I do. Obviously now I live in the north and I am cold. I am cold currently. I'm wearing clothes that would be fine in the southwest at this time of year and I have goosebumps. Um, 
so I'm wearing pants a lot more, but it's still there and it's still really important to me that I got that tattoo. Um, and so both of these tattoos, uh, this one here and the one here that I got in New Mexico, were done by an artist who was relatively new and she did an amazing job. I'm going to link all of the artists who are still like doing art in the description below so that you can uh, go find them and get, get art from them because they're all amazing, wonderful people. Um, the next artist who I saw was when we arrived in Spokane and I wanted to get a touch-up done on this cover-up. So it didn't heal right, basically. I just had her uh, just sort of touch it up and, and fix the pieces that didn't quite heal right and it's looking great at this point in time. I think it's about as good as it's going to get. I do have plans to probably fill the eye in with, with a UV respondent ink. Something maybe purple, I'm thinking, or orange. I'm not super sure, but that is kind of a future down the road, would be nice kind of idea. And the next tattoo that I got is near and dear to my heart. I have a coworker who recently moved across country. She and I hit it off. We write fan fiction, both of us, and um, we're both just like, <laughs> nerds basically um, and we both love sea creatures and so uh, right before she left I was like you know what I want to get a tattoo do you want to come get a tattoo with me and she was like sure what do you want to get and I hadn't I hadn't really thought that we would be doing matching tattoos but I just leaned hard into it and was like jellyfish and so we both got jellyfish uh, tattoos and they're similar but not the same my and uh, this was done by a different artist um, my plan with this tattoo is actually to have it colored in with UV reactive ink and to actually have a Spongebob and Patrick with jellyfish nets running up to toward the jellyfish because I do want to get a Spongebob and Patrick tattoo. I just haven't figured out where and how, but I think that's what I'm going to do. I think it's going to be super cute, um, but we, had, we both had enough money and time for just the line work, so that's what we got done and uh, it will always make me think of her. Always, always, always. I love her so much. Um, the next tattoo I got was another coordinated tattoo with another friend of mine who we actually hadn't gotten tattoos together before, but we've known each other for like seven years at this point. So it's been, it's been a, a pretty long time. Same thing with this person, actually, the, the beeline tattoo person. We've known each other for about seven years as well. Um, so we're both Star Wars nerds. We're actually taking a trip to Disney World here very soon. And um, so he got BB-8 and I got DO, and I'll show you a picture of our tattoos together here in a moment. Um, I designed this one myself, it needs a little bit of a touch-up. This is uh, one of my newer tattoos, so it is still healing, but like I said, it needs some touch-ups. Um, so I chose to do it in a sort of like 80s, 90s style um, color block design, and I wanted it to feel like a cartoon, like we're watching Cartoon Network. And so that is the, the art that I came up with, and the artist was super awesome. She added her own sort of flair to it with these little lines and the shadowing, and I absolutely love this little Dio. And for those of you who don't know, Dio is an android from Star Wars in some of the more recent movies, and he is beautiful and perfect in every way. He's perfect. I love him. Um, it's starting to rain, which is absolutely wonderful. I'm so glad we finally have rain. The final tattoo that I'm going to show you, you're actually going to watch me get this tattoo at some point during this month because I did record that video and I will edit it and upload it so you'll get to see the process of me getting this tattoo. But as my friend and I were getting these tattoos, I looked over to my um, artist's flash wall and saw this amazing, adorable little demon pig. She is perfect in every way. She's a little goth pig. And um, I will go ahead and, and show you her now. So this is my newest tattoo. It is still healing, so it looks a little bit rough, and it does, again, need some touch-ups. My skin is interesting in terms of like whether or not it will receive and accept ink. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the tattoo. This is her. She's beautiful. She's got a little upside-down cross. She's got some piercings, some bat wings, and a little spider tattoo. Um, and her, her name is Babette, and she is perfect. She is perfect in every way. And she has a little uh, toe ring, which I think is super cute. She's perfect in every way, um, and the process of getting her was uh, easy and relatively painless. 
Uh, the most painful tattoo by far that I've gotten is the one on my ribs. This one actually did make me get pretty close to passing out. Um, the least painful, I would say, is uh, this one, actually, least painful. Or maybe even the one on my foot. Like I said, that one tickled, like it didn't really hurt, uh, except for like right up too near between the toes. But yeah, so those are all my tattoos. That's my tattoo tour. I have plans for a bunch more, as you heard. Um, I don't think I'm ever gonna stop. When I first got my first tattoo, I said, I'm not gonna be one of those people who needs to get more tattoos. And... <laughs> Then I became one. It's just, it's really hard not to. I get the tattoo itch probably every six months or so. And I'm lucky enough, um, blessed enough, I, I don't know, I, I tend to find people who are really comfortable with doing trades for tattoos. Um, so my work for their work or um, they're okay with doing discounts or I have friends who want to get matching tattoos and are comfortable paying for both of our art. Um, so yeah, that's the story of my tattoos. It is actually really starting to come down, so I'm going to grab my camera and get out of here, but thank you so much for watching. Happy Vlogoween, and I will see you tomorrow. Someday, little jewels will light the sky And I'll look up at it and think of you, my friend And though you are far beyond my eye The math says that I'll see you again When Earth's reclamation is long past and stardust makes up my mind Through supernova rumble laughs Our dark matter will be easy to find Through all dimensions and with constellation closeness Even with thousands of light years in between system here will be our hostess round the eternal orbit will we ever swing hey there thanks for watching today's video in case you haven't heard i recently released a set of new and old short stories through story done publications annual thriller anthology distant tales this year's publication is titled distant tales second chapter and I would love it if you would check it out. I did the editing and formatting on this thing, and I'm super proud of how it turned out. And of course, it has some amazing stories that will definitely get your blood pumping for the holiday season. As a side note, if you're an author who's looking for community, guidance, or publishing services, feel free to check out Story Den Publications. I work with them as an editor and formatter on a regular basis, and the founder, Tai Hakobo, is a close personal friend of mine, and I really believe in what she's trying to do. Her goal is really just to make indie authors' dreams come true at an affordable rate with high-quality services. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check them out at the link below in the description. Thanks, and have a great day. And I decided... For the most part, the yellow jackets are gone. But every now and then, we get a few. That was one. Um, anyway being visibly queer, 